Hi there, it's Tracy Kiernan from StepbyStepPainting.net. In this acrylic painting tutorial, I'm going to show you how to paint a bouquet of roses in a round glass vase on a 12 by 16 canvas. So this design can work on any size canvas. I just happened to grab the 12 by 16. If you wanna do this on 11 by 14 or square or any size, that um, could be your choice. So. I'm gonna go ahead and get started right away with the background of this painting. And the background is a neutral background, kind of a warm gray color. So I've loaded my palette with the titanium white Mars black and the beige color, the unbleached titanium. So that beige is gonna give it more of a warm tone in the background. If you don't want that, you can substitute the beige um, out of this painting. And I, before I start painting, I'm going to establish where my table line is. That's where this round base is going to be sitting on so that it's a flat surface. It'll just be a simple color, uh, but I do need to establish where that line is. So I'm going to get my T-square ruler and kind of estimate about a quarter of the way down the canvas. If you want to measure it to be exact, it's about four inches from the bottom of the canvas. It'll be a quarter of the way if you're using a different size canvas, or you can just pick a spot and do the horizontal line. So you have enough room for your table area and your vase to be sitting on. So we have a horizontal line and we are going to go ahead and start getting this background in. So I am going to triple load this three quarter inch flat brush in about equal parts white and beige and a little bit of black. You don't want to go crazy with the black because if you loaded your whole brush with a lot of black, it's just going to turn dark gray. We don't really want that for the background. And so just going to take my brush doing zigzag or crisscrossing strokes, kind of expressive strokes. And I will also be using a blender brush for this so that I can make my background more smooth and blended looking. I don't want the angled strokes in this background. By all means, if you want that style in the background, you can. I just wanted to grab my blender brush this time around to do something different with the background. So I actually use makeup brushes for this. This is just a soft elf brand makeup brush that I got from a grocery store. Um, they have them on Amazon too, which is soft bristles. And I take that and I do little circular strokes. And while the paint's still wet, it will smooth out your strokes. So I just want a very light, smooth, blended background without any harsh strokes. And that's why, uh, again, totally optional if you don't wanna do that or if you don't like the effect that creates. So I just do my area and then I take the brush and I'm very lightly blended out. You don't want to press too hard because then you'll be moving the paint around too much and then your blender brush will be creating strokes. We just want to use it just the tip of the bristles very lightly to blend it all out. So I basically have the two brushes in my hand and I'm just kind of going back and forth with it. So I'm applying the color with the flat brush, doing my strokes and then taking my blender and smoothing that out and just going back and forth. You, um, there's a lot of variety in the color in the background. So some areas have a little bit more warm beige color. Some are more cool. So it just kind of varies and it looks really pretty and neutral and interesting versus if it was just a solid color. So there's not really any way you can mess this up. It's just a very thin layer of different colors of paint. So you can just kind of relax and let that paint do its own thing. Yours will definitely definitely look different from mine and that's okay.
So we have our top part of our background in and we're gonna do the bottom part. The bottom part, we don't need the blender brush unless you want to do the blender brush on the bottom and you'll kind of see what I'm doing here. I'm gonna do the same thing, the triple lobe thing, but I'm doing horizontal strokes. So everything under that horizontal line is horizontal strokes. I'm making it slightly darker just to give it some contrast, but uh, it'll be just because our strokes are going a different direction, it'll be enough to where it doesn't really need contrast to stand out. It'll look like a table area simply because our strokes are going left and right. So just use those colors, whatever's left on your palette. If you want to make it lighter, you can just do the combination of the three colors and everything below that line is horizontal. When you're done with this step, you will need to make sure your painting is dry. So set it aside, come back, or you can use a hair dryer and dry it. You can also paint the sides with the colors that's on your palette. Um, I'm not gonna paint the sides in this video demonstration, but sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Um, so here we go, my painting is dry and I am going to draw the composition of the bouquet next. I will be using a piece of chalk. So I'm gonna hand draw this. I do have a traceable for this if you're not really comfortable with doing this drawing. Very simple, basic shapes. So our vase is a circle. So we can start by drawing an actual circle that is uh, kind of in the middle, the bottom part of the circle is in the middle of the table area. It goes up about five inches, maybe five or six inches. And then the top of our circle kind of stops and then there's like an oval sort of oblong oval shape at the top where the opening of the vase is. The bottom of the vase is a little bit flat so you can kind of make that part a little bit flat. I'm holding this piece of chalk very lightly and I'm sketching, meaning I'm doing my lines multiple times until I kind of get the line that I'm going for. That's why you see multiple circle lines. And when I paint this in, I'll be able to erase leftover chalk later. And then I'm gonna do the stem. So just the bouquet has these stems that are going down into the vase. They're going kind of crisscross diagonal with a vertical one thrown in there as well. And then I'm going to draw the flower heads. So these flowers are not exactly circles. They're kind of organic circles that are kind of wobbly on the side. And I'm going to do several of them. So some of them are bigger. Some are kind of on the side and smaller. They're very close to each other. They're almost overlapping, but not quite. And I'm just going to keep doing various circles slash, slash organic shapes, kind of building my bouquet. And some areas have the little leaves kind of stemming out. So for this leaf, I did one hanging out of the side of the glass with two leaves. And then right here is kind of a tricky area because this is the opening of the vase. We could have a flower or two overlapping the vase to make it a little bit more realistic or give it some more depth in our painting. And we have some overlapping happening. And then 
We can have another spray of leaf coming out over here in the upper left. Feel free to change this up a little bit if you don't like this composition or if you want to do it differently. You can make your roses go di in different directions, make your leaves go in direct different directions. But the key thing here is kind of a variety, but you're still kind of trying to balance your bouquet out. So a little bit of symmetry with the leaves on both sides and um, the flowers, a little bit of asymmetry because they're not exactly even on both sides, if that makes sense. So once you're happy with your drawing composition of your bouquet, we can always paint more in later when we start painting in. We're gonna do, I'm gonna show you my rose technique. It's like an abstract sort of rose technique to simplify the how to paint roses because roses can be tricky to paint. A lot of flowers are tricky to paint. I actually experimented with three different reds. You don't have to use all three of these reds. In fact, I think it won't make much of a difference if you use maybe one or two of the reds. But I used Cad Red Deep, Primary Red, and Alizarin Crimson. I also used a number eight round brush for this. And all the materials and colors are listed in the materials part of this tutorial, by the way. And I'm going to start with Cad Red Deep. You can actually start with any of those reds. I just happen to select that one. So the first step is very simple. It's just painting the shape in. So a solid color, we're not doing shading or highlighting or anything like that. We're just painting in that shape that we drew with the chalk. And to make things interesting, for each rose, I actually kind of varied that red a bit. So instead of rinsing my brush, I just went straight for that primary red. That's that middle red color on my palette. And I grabbed that one. And so I'm painting the next shape in. I'm going in a circle direction as I paint the rose in. It's kind of important, but kind of lays, lays the groundwork for this technique. We want to paint in kind of a circular direction. So try to do that instead of doing like up and down strokes. You just want to kind of paint in circular strokes. Get it all filled in and solid. You are allowed to go outside the lines of your drawing. Your drawing was only a guideline. So if it's going inside the lines or outside or however that rose kind of develops as you paint it in, that's okay. So just filling each of those in solid and varying those reds a bit. On some of the roses, I made, I kind of wiggled my brush on the outside part of that, the circumference of that circle. Uh, you don't have to do that. We'll do a little bit more of that later when we do the petals. Next, we want to paint a dark center in our roses, and I'm going to use the color black for this. So I, little bit, a tiny dot of black right there on the tip of my brush with the red still on my brush. And I'm going to make a very dark red on my palette. I'm using Alizarin Crimson to add to this. So whatever colors were left on the brush, the cad red, the primary red, 
plus the alizarin and a little dot of black so it doesn't have to be the exact proportion just a dark red and paint a uh, sort of cat eye shape in the middle uh, like a, a circle organic little blob <laughs> in the center of each of your flower your roses and that's gonna give that center that dark look that we want when we add the highlights to it so you'll kind of see what happens later so just adding a dark center and notice how they're not all the same it doesn't even have to be the exact center you could um, do the black part kind of offset to the left a little bit on some of the roses you can do the dark part a little bit higher in some of the roses lower so you don't have to keep it consistent it can be varied and even the color itself is going to be varied because some of these roses are not dried all the way so the red is mixing with my dark color and also I go to reload my brush and I might grab a different red on there to kind of vary that color a little bit this one has kind of a bigger darker center they kind of look like poppies right now so we have a dark center inside of our red roses I'm going to completely rinse this brush now because now I'm going to introduce white into it so this would be a tint so I'm adding white to my red color and I want to make a light red color on my palette so I just mixed white with any of those red colors it doesn't really matter I grabbed the primary red and the cad red deep and I made a light red on my palette then I'm going to start on the outside part of the dark mark and do a curved stroke so I did one two three that are kind of staggering and overlapping each other I'm pressing and I'm curving it and that will create the highlight of the petal. So I'm press and curve, press and curve, press and curve, leaving a lot of that red still showing through. So that leftover dark red will be our darker shadowy part of the rose and leaving that center dark. And I'm going to vary this light red on each of my roses, just like how I varied that first layer of it. So that time I grabbed a different, the primary red and added the white. And you can see how this one's a little bit darker. I'm gonna add a little bit more white to get that to stand out. But I'm doing the same thing, kind of pressing and turning in C strokes going outwards and it kind of looks cool when you vary that white so on the outer part I actually grabbed a little bit more white so you can when you reload the brush you can kind of vary the white and the red levels of your brush and just kind of experiment with it you can go back over your strokes again if you want to so I'm going to kind of go back I kind of went back on that one and then go on to our next rows here same technique pressing and turning doing C strokes, going outwards, forming the petals of the roses. When you reload, you can add different amounts of white and red to your brush. Right there, it did overlap that previous rose, and that's okay. We like overlapping, especially in a bouquet. Their flowers are allowed to touch each other and overlap each other. You just wanna be careful if you are going back over your strokes, like right that one, did a little bit smaller strokes right there in the center I kind of like how that worked out um, but just be careful when you keep going over it you don't want to go over it multiple times until it all turns the same color then it'll kind of lose its effect so two one two maybe three times but I would stop after the third time so this rose kind of the same thing so not really realism for roses but still kind of abstract and we can tell they're roses and it's a really simple effective technique and then I'm just going back on this one with a little bit of white to overlap and then I'm just gonna repeat this same technique for each of those roses. I'm loading more of the Cad Red Deep to my palette so that I can mix that with the whites. Notice that when I load the color, I actually uh, take a little part of the palette on the side and kind of brush it out a little bit. That helps to mix your color a little bit before you add your stroke to the canvas.
I did a few strokes in the center where that dark piece is, not trying to cover up all the dark, but just adding a little bit extra red in that area to kind of make it go with the rest of the rows. And then I added more alizarin crimson, that dark red, to my palette. You don't have to do this if you like the way your roses look. You don't have to do anything to them. I just did a few strokes on the outer parts of some of the roses, of the uh, little petals going on the outside part of it. Just a few strokes on the outside. And some of them I added a few strokes just so that rose can overlap another rose. So like right here on the bottom, adding that stroke right there on the bottom helped that top rose overlap to that other one that's kind of tucked away further back. few more smaller strokes kind of in the middle. Again, you don't want to overdo it because then it'll all kind of mesh and turn the same color. And then I did one more round of white highlight in that without rinsing the brush, just a little bit of white right there on the tip, kind of doing smaller strokes in there. Just a few little pops of white, give it a little pop of highlight on the roses. Helps to kind of define the shape since there's a lot of red, that white kind of helps to break up that red a little bit. Okay, so we are going to transition to our greenery in this painting. And I'm going to get this brush all rinsed off and load my palette with the color Hooker's Green Hue Permanent and I'll be using a different brush. I'll be using my number four round brush for this. So this is the Hooker's Green Hue Permanent. And then my number four round brush, which is a smaller round brush, a little bit more easier to control with these smaller lines and stems that we're painting. So when I do the green rose leaves, I like to add a little bit of red to my Hooker's Green Hue Permanent. So you saw me do that on the palette as I'm um, mixing that color, just a little bit of that red. I believe that was the Cad Red. Could be any of those reds to do this effect. So adding a little bit of red right there to that green gives it more of a natural warm green color. And I started with the stems that are in the vase and I just outlined what I drew with the chalk. Some of those lines I kind of did my own direction where there wasn't chalk there. And then you can add some white to your green as well. That gives that green a lighter color and it also allows for some color variation in your stems. So when they're overlapping, they're kind of slightly a different color. You don't have to do the color variation thing if you want it to just to be all solid green. You don't even have to mix the red in it either if you want to simplify it. So just do the stems and then we will do the leaves of this. So with this green, sometimes it helps to add a little bit of water to your brush. So when you're mixing your color with your little bit of red and you paint and it's not really flowing, grab a little bit of water on the tip of the brush and then do your stroke. So for these leaves, I actually do some pressure change with my brush. So for the point, I'm releasing the pressure. So I'm pressing down hard at first. So pressing lightly for the, the stem part, but for the leaf part, 
You want to kind of press hard at first and then release the pressure when you go to the point. So the stem part, you can do it the opposite way. You can press light at first for the, the point and then you can press down harder with the bristles to create the thicker part of the leaf. Or you can just outline the shape of the leaf and just paint it in solid. I am doing a little bit of color variation with the leaves, adding different amounts of red. You don't want to do equal amounts of red and green because then it would be too dark and look brown. So you want to have your proportion of red to be much less than your green. But you can vary your color. You can add a little bit of white to it if you want for a little bit of highlight on the leaf. So when you go reload the brush, you can grab different amounts of that. I'm just going to fill in these other leaf stem things that are kind of hanging out of our bouquet. I'll grab a little bit of the white and do like a stroke on one side of the leaf that'll just kind of make it look like that light is hitting that part of the leaf and not do it on both sides. If you just take that white and do a couple strokes in there and it gives that leaf a little bit of shine. There's a lot of gaps in our roses and to kind of fill that up, I'm just gonna take the green and just kind of stipple in some green in these gaps. So it kind of looks like there are some more leaves back there in the bundle or, or stems. So just taking different amounts of that green and just kind of dotting that color back there to fill up those gaps so that lighter background isn't really showing through. Next, I'll do the vase, and we need some fresh titanium white for this and a very clean brush. We don't want any green or red into this brush. This is the number four round brush. I'm loading the tip of it in that white, and I just kind of pinched it with my finger to make sure those bristles were all gathered because I want to paint a very, very thin line. And all I'm doing is outlining what I drew with the chalk. Of course, I have multiple chalk lines going on, so I can kind of just pick the line that I like the best and I am outlining it with one thin line or trying to do it with one line that one got kind of sketchy right there but that's okay and remember our circle goes kind of flat on the bottom so just outlined the circle don't worry about your chalk we can erase that chalk later with a damp cloth after this dries and then we have our water line 
of our rose, assuming that there's water in this vase. So I can take my white and kind of do a sort of curved line and a curved line in the back that goes behind the stems. So the curved line in the front goes over and the curved line in the back goes under. We can see a little bit of that opening, but not very much because those roses are overlapping. So I just did a little bit of white at the top. Um, the water line, noticed it wasn't like a continuous line. I just kind of let the water, the paint run dry. And I'm actually going to add a little bit of green to my water line, give that some reflection. So maybe the stems are kind of reflecting on that water a little bit. So I'm just taking that green and just gently brushing that. And you can see it overlap the stems. So now we have a little bit of indication that our stems are in water and I can take that green and maybe just kind of lightly outline that waterline area, but not too much, very dry brush style. So not a lot of paint on my brush, held it very lightly, very softly. And I'm gonna to switch to a 12 bright brush. This is a little flat brush, like a quarter inch flat brush. And I'm gonna do some dry brush here. So the dry brush is going to give my vase a glare and give it that glass effect. So I loaded my bright brush in the white, grabbed my rag and wiped it off so that there's only a small amount of paint on the tip of the brush. So when you go to reload, you wanna take your brush, wipe it off and you do your stroke and so this stroke down here is kind of going left and right. The first one I did is curved. So our glass vase is a round vase so I can do my glare in a curved direction. This is giving my vase glass texture, giving it a glare, making it look like it has some 3D form to it. But I don't want it to be solid bright white. I'm not doing it over all of it. Remember this is glass, so it's very see-through. We don't want to cover all of it. And down here, I did a little bit extra brighter white down here, and I just kind of let that fade away as I went up. It gives my base, maybe the light is hitting it right there, extra glare, extra bright, gives it some variation in brightness level. So it's not all the same. Again, you wanna leave a lot of space open and not painted because it's a see-through glass. So we don't want to paint glare over everything, just some of the things. And then at the top, I did a little bit of glare right here just because I wanted it to look like those stems are inside the vase. So I did a little bit of glare to overlap those stems and make it look like they are inside. So that is pretty much it for my glare. I want to maybe add a little bit extra white at the bottom, but that would be enough. And I could outline the outer part of my vase with a second coat. So that white is extra bright just on the outside edges of that shape. So all I'm doing is outlining my first line with a second coat of paint to make that brighter. And then my top piece right here, I'm just gonna go back over that with the red and white to make it look like that rose is overlapping. Let this dry and then grab a soft cloth or baby wipe. I, I like to use a baby wipe to get rid of my chalk because it's gentle and it removes the chalk very nicely. So I'm just erasing my chalk line from the vase. And then any chalk lines that might still be showing up in the bouquet, you can erase those as well. So next I decided to fill a little bit of that empty space on the lower left part of the bouquet. We can leave it like this, but I wanted to balance it out a little bit by adding another large kind of different looking leaf. So I'm doing the this with the number eight round brush. I'm mixing my red and greenish color. And I added a little bit more white into it. So this is the hooker's green with the cad red deep, and a little bit of white just to give it a little bit of a different color at first. 
kind of more of a uh, lighter color. I guess it's very similar to the other ones, but I'm making this one bigger and it's kind of hanging down, filling this open spot over here. Grab a little bit more white. And then I can, to make this look different, I can put some vein lines on my leaf. So using the, the little bit of white right there on the tip of the brush, this number eight round brush has a nice, very thin tip to the brush. That's why I'm able to do thinner lines. If the brush you're using doesn't have like a thin point at the end, you can probably switch to another smaller round brush to do this. But I did the line in the middle and then I just did like curved strokes on the outer part of the middle part just to give it some um, vein lines on that leaf. And I didn't do that for all the leaves. I could have, but it would have looked a little bit too busy in my opinion to do those lines and a little bit tedious to do all those lines as well. So, but did another big leaf over here. Again, just to balance this out, my bouquet itself is a little bit asymmetrical, but there's an open spot over here for some more green leaves. Next, I will be demonstrating how I did the rose that's lying down on the table next to the vase. And this is my number four round brush. Get my eight round kind of cleaned and set aside. So this is Alizarin Crimson, but you can use any of the reds. They're all very similar. And so for my rosebud, I first painted an oval, an oblong oval, kind of a more like a teardrop shape. So it goes pointed on the right. You can see the right part's pointed. This left part is curved. So kind of a teardrop shape. So there is the shape of my bud. So this is just going to be a rose that's not completely opened all the way. And then before this dries, I'm gonna take my round brush, so this is still got red on it, grabbing a little bit of white, so just kind of like how I did the petal things, but this time I'm gonna do something different. So I'm gonna paint an oval in the center with like two or three strokes, but not blended in all the way. I'm gonna let that white still kind of show. So it's kind of a smaller version of the first shape that I painted. Grabbed more white on my brush, and I'm gonna start at the top and stroke downwards. And then over here on the left, on the top part, stroke downwards to create the petals that might be overlapping. So try not to go over your strokes too much. So we have the different kind of layers of petals. And then we're gonna do leaves that are hugging this rosebud shape. So again, abstract, simplified, nothing realistic here. Then I'm going to rinse and grab my green and do the stem next. We want our rosebud to dry before we do any leaves that might be overlapping our rosebud. So grabbing the green that's on my palette, I can load some more green on that if it's dried up all the way. Then I'm going to paint the base of my rose. So doing like a little circle right there on the base and in doing the stem, little circle stem, and then I can make my stem a little bit wobbly, give it a little notch right there. And then you can let this dry or you just get the blow dryer and dry that really quick because we're gonna have some leaves that are gonna overlap the rosebud. Grab your green, grab a little bit of white to make it lighter and then do a leaf. So this is a, a leaf that's kind of thick on the bottom, but it goes very thin, very fast, and it hugs our rose. So it kind of curves and hugs the outer part of our rose bud. So it's thick at first, and then it gets very thin. And then we can even take the end of our leaf and kind of curve it outwards a little bit. It's on the edge of the leaf. You see how it kind of goes to a point and hugs it, but right here we can have it kind of curve outwards. You can do another piece of leaf if you want, kind of make it asymmetrical. 
And then that rosebud doesn't have any extra leaves. That's all it is. So if you want to paint more rosebuds all along your table, you're welcome to. I decided since it's close to Valentine's Day to do the little sweethearts on the table as well. Uh, a little bit tricky, in my opinion, to do these little tiny hearts. So if you're up for the challenge, you can try it. Uh, if you want to skip this step, you're welcome to. But I started with just basically used a number four round brush and mixed various amounts of white with different reds. So when you mix white with primary red, it makes it look pink. So I made a light pink color and I painted the basic heart shape. And for each of these heart shapes, they're little, they're very tiny and they're kind of going in different directions. So all, I, all I'm doing is painting little hearts on the table using different reds and whites, pretty solid. This step is easy, but when we start making those look 3D and adding shadow, it does get a little tricky. So the alizarin mixed with white makes a pretty color. So we have all different reds. I didn't introduce any other colors to this, just step kept with the pinks and reds. When you're ready to do the 3D part, don't rinse your brush, but grab a little bit of white right there on the tip of the brush and do the bottom part of your heart and just stroke the bottom part in one stroke. So for this one, it's facing this way. So I did my little 3D thing, just kind of outline the outer part of it to make that little 3D side of it. So I'm gonna do that for each of my hearts. I'm using that white and it's just kind of blending with the red that's still on my brush. That side of that pink heart turned a little bit red. And this one, the camera got cut off there a little bit, but it basically, you'll see what happened. It's just that one stroke on the bottom and then the same thing with this upper right heart, just one stroke on the bottom with that lighter color. And this one I'll go back with that white. When you're ready to do the shadows, you can uh, take a break and come back or dry this area really well. It all needs to be dry so that our shadow color doesn't smear with our reds and green and mess anything up. So make sure that's nice and dry. And then on your palette, you wanna mix a light watered down gray. So a about three parts white to one part black. And you can see me kind of mixing that. It's just gotta be darker than the table color so it shows up and it needs to be thinned down. That's why I'm adding a lot of water to my brush and just adding that water to the color on there. And then you can kind of test it out a little bit right there under the glass base to make sure it's gonna be dark enough. And then just very gently do left and right strokes under your object to create the shadow. So make sure it's very thin, added more water to my brush. So right here, left and right strokes under our stem and under the leaf. So basically under the object that you're uh, making the shadow for. And then we'll do something else to the shadow here as well. I'm just doing left and right strokes right here under our heart, little left and right strokes. Little left and right strokes. It looks a little bit messy at first, but I'll show you what we can do to kind of get that to blend in a little bit better on our table line. So I'm gonna go back in with lighter colors. So adding a little bit more white to my gray to lighten it up. And then I went back and lightened that shadow up and just kind of did left and right strokes, kind of blended it back into the background color. Get that to be watered down a little bit more with that lighter gray. 
just adding that in there, left and right strokes. It's almost like a watercolor technique because it's a watercolor consistency. So the transparency of it is blending in with the table color, the base of the table color. Just going back in with that darker color again, outlining that bottom part. And then I can take my finger and just kind of smear it. And then we lost our leaf here, so I went back and did that leaf. Instead of my finger, I could also take my bright brush or any flat brush. I don't want to use the blender brush because the bristles are too big on that, but I just made sure that one was dry. And I can do that to just kind of softly go over that, make that shadow a little bit softer so the strokes are not so harsh. So our shadow's a little bit softer, but we lost some of our 3D edges of our hearts. So I just went back in and just kind of redid some of the 3D edges. And then I also decided to kind of loosely outline some of these hearts with the white. Kind of gave that a little bit extra pop and contrast. Um, it would be cute if you had, like had a paint pen. You can put little XOXO or letters or words on your hearts, but that was a little bit too busy, I would think. I'm just adding a little bit of color to some of these, giving a little bit of shading. You don't have to do this, you can simplify that. So this tutorial is coming to its conclusion as I finish up final touch-ups on all these little sweethearts. I hope that you enjoyed painting a rose vase with me. Thanks for watching and thanks for painting with me. Happy Valentine's Day.